lens protector. That's pretty critical when you're filming on the farm. Good morning update video for this week. It's gonna be a good one. We're gonna figure out exactly how much it cost me to raise those 50-ish meat chickens. So stay tuned. First, we're gonna do an update. How is everything doing? Well, I feel like we're on the up and up, especially in the garden. It's exciting. Quick announcement before we get going. Laurel, Laurel, you wanna be a star? You wanna be a star, Laurel? Laurel, you wanna be a star? <laughs> you wanna be a star? Come on, you wanna go with me on the chores? We're making a special movie tomorrow just about Laurel, the puppy. A puppy video for kids. I love our kid fans, wanna give a gift back. Very happy about this. It's like overnight our plants in this garden improved. I was this close to saying, let's just, just put the chickens back in there and let's just start over. Look how green and lush we got fruit, reasonable sized fruit. The Swiss chard I'm so happy about. We eat Swiss chard like two or three times a week in the morning with our egg. The cucumbers are running on our cucumber cage. This is gonna be fun. If this grows up, you know, come out here, get some shade, the kids can plant here. You can plant lettuce, which usually doesn't tolerate heat. Could maybe grow under there because you have a shade. This persimmon tree in the back of my garden, look, it's growing fruit. Lots and lots and lots of fruit. <laughs> That's been three years in the making here. Hey, you gonna go with me now? You gonna go with me? We have a volunteer cucumber coming in, or maybe Rebecca planted that, and it's gonna drape over the edge. This is the Bulletproof Permaculture Garden. Of course, it's doing great. Appropriate amount of mulch, appropriate amount of uh, weed cover. This is doing amazing. Don't you go in there. Do not go to the bathroom in there. Come on. Come on, let's go. That's a problem. She likes to pee. <laughs> you getting kisses? Is, is, you guys wanna see more of that? You guys wanna see more of that? Like me hugging her, or giving me a kiss? <laughs> Do not pee in the mulch, okay? I won't even tell your mom if you pee in the blueberry mulch. Just not the kitchen garden mulch. Come on. <laughs> Thought she was doing the pee walk. Blueberries, blueberries. So close. Boom. Oh look, good job, good job Laurel. Good job. We'll give her her privacy and then I'll reward her with some petting. Our blueberries, gosh, they're like hovering at this stage. This barely purple stage. Hey Laurel, good job. Good job. <laughs> Come on, I'm just gonna pet you. <laughs> the raspberries, of course, are having no problem. They say raspberries are gonna take over. Well, that's good, because I like raspberries. The sweet potato patch is thickening up. I'm very excited. It's planted in a pile of old leaves, like this is three-year-old leaves. Of course, it's turned into soil, and look how it's doing. You know, some, some weeds coming in, but we pretty much planted in, you know, it pretty much looked like this. We planted some, we pulled some weeds, but, oh, that's a sweet potato about pulled. Uh, doesn't look like we're missing any more plants. They're doing great. I love it because we love sweet potatoes. Let's pull it and the weeds become the mulch. There's the cows by our house. This is the first spot we mowed behind the cows. I want to see I want you guys to see the difference. So this is where we mowed behind the cows. Look. Lush, green, not much has gone to seed head. Look, isn't that beautiful? Isn't this a beautiful view? Look, we've got clover and grasses. And this kind of stuff, they don't like to eat. But there's not that much of it. Compared to this, we did not mow behind them here. See how that weed has gotten ahead of itself? Look at the difference. Can you see the height difference? Boom, yeah, you can see that. Where we didn't mow behind the cows, where we did mow behind the cows. Hey, uh, Violet, you're actually looking particularly, you're actually looking pretty good this morning. You know, Violet, if you look to their left side, right there, in the triangle, that's full. Right there, look right there at the triangle. <laughs> good morning to you. 
Look right there at that triangle. Oh, they're in separate paddocks? Oh, how'd they get in separate paddocks? Okay. Oh well, I'll have to fix that in a minute. She's always full. So she's eating, she's drinking, her poop looks good. Her coat is starting to shed. I think maybe she's adjusting. We do wish she would have a slick coat. We completely shed. So we think whatever she has, whatever we're doing is working. I think she's slowly getting her physique back. Ah, oh, Maple, I put you off too long. I haven't listed her. I haven't listed her. She's for sale, but I haven't listed her. I'm realizing the sheep are doing a great job. They're actually doing such a good job. They're gonna quickly grow, go through the yard. So I'm gonna put a half pasture up above them. I mean, that's a good problem to have, but they're gonna get through the entire yard before it's time to come back and hit where they started, at least 21 days. So we'll run them up into the pasture to buy time and then come back and hit where we started in the yard and go through it again. Are you gonna have problems getting out? Ever since we covered up that trench, they haven't been getting out. How are the new sea monsters doing? Fun. Any more dye? Yeah. Let's clean up their water real good. Here, let's put down some shavings. Pull everything out. Let's put down for a little, sprinkle some fresh shavings. Mm -hmm. So only three died have been, only three have died out of 75 in here. That's much more normal. I wouldn't even be concerned until you get over 10%. So seven, eight. But with magic, water, and fermented feed, it should be like 5%, like what we have. Oh look, nothing going on in here. It's kind of a stalemate. Stalemate till July, till we start planting again for the fall and winter gardens. Right across the street, potatoes. You see, they're starting to look bad, right? That's good, actually, that's normal. The potatoes grow, they grow real green, and then they start dying. It doesn't mean you've done a bad job, it means the potatoes are about ready to harvest. Our broccoli is spent. We used it, we harvested every single head. It was great. What I'm really excited about is the cabbage. That one's coming in very nice. This garden kind of looks crazy, but trust me, it's not. I like it. We have cover crop sown in between the plants to keep the ground covered. Doesn't seem to be harming it too bad. Look, the beets are coming in nice. Those are beets right there. The corn's jamming. How are our, oh look, we got some tomato plants. How are our mulch bombs doing? That one's missing. <laughs> Where does the plant go? It doesn't have legs, it doesn't get up and walk. Our mulch bombs doing, uh, eh. Let's see. Maybe mom will treat them with some of her compost tea and we'll have a recovery. We had an experiment where we just planted into sod with a mulch bomb. And it actually seemed to be doing the better than the ones in the garden. Look, doing good. And this one, back in the garden, doing good. And incidentally, all this cover crop, edible. Edible by us and the chickens, pigs. So when we're done in here, we bring the chickens and pigs in here and they have a lot of food for a long time. Ooh, there's a squash just jamming. Growing up next to the corn, shading out any weeds for the corn, that's neat. Come across, come across. There's that garden. Here we go, here's where the chickens were on their very first crop garden. Still, not doing so well up here, but down here, things are doing good. Things are on the up and up. Look at that, woo! Thank you chickens, they're on their next job. I don't think they're working fast enough for when we're gonna need to plant this. So I'm hoping to unleash the pigs. Because look what the pigs were able to do in like two weeks. They prepped this garden area. This this is ready. We've planted we've planted in this. We've moved them on here. What if we could put them together with the chickens? Concentrate our chores, not have two different elements. One thing to visit. I think that will help. Back over here over top. Pooper, how you doing, honey? How you doing, girl? Such a good guard. That's that's the guard you think. Squawk. She's training. She doesn't like to go in the coop at night. The old ladies didn't receive her too well, but during the summer, when we had Donald, he didn't really like to go in the coop. Oh boy, party's over. This fence is no longer, I wonder if this is off. I wonder if this fence is off. 
What do you think? Because we got no but half the flocks out. Is that soft? No, it's on. Wonder if it's the extra moisture this morning. It's all the ices though. Only one big girl. No, two big girls. Three big girls. Oh my gosh. Four big girls. Ah, that's defeating. Okay, y'all are not big enough for this net yet. Good news though, in situations like this, I've contacted Premier One, the folks who make this fence. They have a shocker knot fence, that's what they call it. And it's got more strands. If you see these finally, see how small these nets are right here? Well, I think they're even smaller and I think they're even taller up. Because oftentimes the chickens can get above them and go in the big ones. We're gonna showcase that. We're gonna see how that works. See if that will help us in a situation of keeping small chicks in. Honestly, I wanna move the baby sea monsters out before they're three weeks old. I wanna really push it and get them on grass as soon as possible. This meat shawl, absolutely happy with it. There are some changes I'm gonna make for the next batch. And yes, I'm gonna make these plans available at the end of season after I've tried and tested it. We're gonna put bigger wheels on it. That's gonna change our handle size. How y'all this morning? Good. Look at the size of him. He's huge, dude. He's gonna be here height soon. Oh, Maybe by the end of the summer. Kaylin, how do you like farm life so far? Good. Do you like getting up early in the morning to work? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, Violet, come on, sweetie. Oh, I know how. Oh, how'd you get in there, Stud Muffin? Go ahead, go ahead, Violet. Go, go. Stud, I don't know, jumped this fence, I guess. Well, look at you. <laughs> Look at you up there. Aren't you something? Huh? You coming around for the milking? I know you. I know you are. I know you are. I just love having the cats and dogs around. Don't they add just such a good element? You guys ready? You ready for this? All right, folks. It's the moment everybody's been waiting for. You ready to do this, Rebecca? I am. How much were we able to raise these chickens for? Were we able to be Whole Foods prices? I know we were able to beat, without even adding up any numbers, Whole Foods quality, Yes. right? Let's do this. We ended up with 57 processed chickens. Yes. They ended up weighing, we weighed every single one of them, wrote down every single one of them, added it all up, 261 pounds. That came to four and a half pound average, so that was less than I thought. I figured maybe five pounds. I was actually excited about that. Yeah. That does mean though we don't need to harvest them That's any earlier. Seven, yeah. We did it just right at exactly eight weeks old. Yeah. Four and a half pounds is perfect in your freezer. Did you have any trouble with any of them in your bag? Nope. I mean, we did have a six and a half pound monster. Yeah, we didn't have okay. any problems with that. It fit fine. We went through 18 bags of premium or new country organic feed. We bought those in bulk. Like, what do we have to do? Order 30 bags or we, so? Um, so we bought a pallet and we ordered 31 bags of starter feed for the Cornish Cross. We mm -hmm. ordered six layer, um, six bags of layer feed, and then we ordered some different minerals so, and stuff like that. So it came out to 42 bags on the pallet. You can have up to 45 bags on a pallet. And so the shipping was $163 for that pallet. Did and you break it down per bag, the shipping so then, per bag? Okay. So then the shipping per bag was like, I forget what it, it was. I had it written down and it's calculated in the price, but it was something like $3.80 okay. a bag. Okay, three, it's $3.38 per bag. Correct. Cost of food and shipping. If we were to buy that local, it'd be about $40 and then we'd have to pay taxes. So that's tax and everything, or yeah. we didn't have to pay taxes. We didn't have to bulk. pay taxes because anyway, it was Virginia. We saved like, that's one way to do it is we ordered in bulk. Yeah. So you, you can't, you don't need 40 bags yourself. Go in with some friends, start a co-op, do something like that. That's one way to save. Save <laughs> Total feed cost was $600.84. That's a lot, that was a lot to Total. pay up front. Then it was $12.82 because we had to buy two bags of shavings, got those at Tractor Supply. With tax, it was $12.82 for both of them. Yeah. I ordered the shrink wrap bags um, online and for using 57 bags, it was a total of $22.42.
$184.25 for chicks that's shipped to us. Our total cost with all those expenses added up was $820.33. That comes to a grand total of three dollars and fourteen cents. Yeah. Whole Foods charges. Whole Foods is about three ninety nine <laughs> a pound. We're coming at you, Amazon. So we did better. We saved money, which was it's awesome. I mean, we don't do it to save money particularly. Yeah. It's great to save money. We have no problem saving money. If you count our time. There went the money yeah, savings out the window. Yeah, but as far as our product being a superior product, Joel Salatin actually just came out. I think he was on a podcast or he wrote an article. I cannot remember, but he was talking about like 95% of the organic chickens um, sold in America are actually it's just factory farm so, organic. What you're buying at Whole Foods is just a factory farm chicken. Now yeah. it's organic. It's better. It's, it's better fed than conventional. It's organic food. But. It hasn't seen the sunshine. It doesn't get fresh it, air. It hasn't had the I mean, grass. maybe it does. Maybe, maybe there. Are, maybe the factory farm is varying. Like maybe some are have access to out, outdoors. Maybe some don't. I think Whole Foods does have like a step system in which you can rate like it's one to four, and four being like pasture based and the best, and then one being yeah. the worst, which is like completely indoors. So you know, if you look at their meat, sometimes it's like their people are charging super high prices for step one and you're like wait a minute this is like factory farmed but fed organic food and they're charging a high price for it and so to be a, a smart consumer it's hard sometimes here's a question what it's not really fair to compare it even to whole foods because that's so bulk and that's yeah. so mass produced it's really hard to beat that price did what would it be at a farmer's market? Do I want to say when I was looking it up online, now this like was just organic looking it up market. online, it was like five ninety nine a pound. Six bucks. Yeah. So I'm really happy with that, Rebecca, because actually with just one little batch, do you realize if we paid three dollars a pound and we sold it for six dollars a pound, mm -hmm. that'd be double our money. Yeah. That's that's. I'm wondering what Primal Pastures, because Primal Pastures, an organic pasture raised bird, Ooh, is thirty dollars. We compare with that. that. It's thirty dollars. For a chicken? I want to say. It's like so $29. Let's say that's five pounds, just for easy math. Yeah. That's six dollars a pound. Okay. That's the better so, comparison. So yeah. we have, like, if we were to go buy it ourselves, that's what we would buy. That's what we would we buy. We would buy the farm-based chicken. We wouldn't buy the whole thing. Uh, yeah, chicken. I mean. Uh, in a pinch we would, but we would go for the farm-based. That's what we can, that's a more same quality. Right. We double, we, we have that. Yeah. We cut our cost in half. Good job. <laughs> I mean, it was a lot of time, but totally worth it. Hey, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? If you guys wanna geek out on that math, I'll, how about I leave a resource sheet? I'll leave it in the description. Um, also give you also give you our how-to butchering. We didn't show the butchering on YouTube. So we're gonna put it in, we're just gonna give it to you free on our own platform. Sign up with your email address and we'll give you in the show notes of that video We'll give you not only a step-by-step -step guide to butchering, but we'll also give you all this and like where we got our chicks, the new country organic link, all that stuff. And and you can see how it broke down and you can calculate your own costs. Go get it, it's down in the description. Oh, Becky, there it is. Have you tasted it yet? No, I haven't. I've been tasting it. It's like we've died and gone to heaven. So nice. It's, it's like I've died and gone to heaven. Have you tasted it yet? No, I haven't. Let's see you taste it. All right. Take a piece of that grass, pasture-based skin. It's delicious. Delicious. It's more juicy. It's more juicy than the store. You, just, you just can't buy this. No. It's juicy. It's fresh. Mmm. It's got an actual taste to it. This chicken has an actual taste to it. The store is more neutral.